Hello, everyone. Welcome back. So continuing our discussion uh, about circuit analysis in the well, POS domain, let's uh, do a recap of uh, what we did in circuit one quickly and then see uh, if we can expand some of what we did in circuit one to what we now know about Laplace. So very early on, if you remember, we defined resistance. So we said if we have a black box and there are two terminals coming off of it, we're going to define something called resistance, and that would be the voltage or potential difference across those two terminals divided by the current that is going to it. Uh, and this is a very general definition. You can always use it. Now, uh, if inside you have a resistor, it happens to be a resistor, one or um, a combination of many that you can then turn into an equivalent, uh, just one resistor, then this equation basically becomes a number. Or so uh, that's how uh, the physics of this resistance uh, is going to impose uh, the uh, values for the voltage and current, assuming everything is linear, obviously, but that's the most, for the most part is the assumption. And because of that uh, physics, then for resistors, the definition of resistance ends up being a number that we call the resistance of that resistor that is inside. Um, so that was good. And then we actually called this a different thing. Oh, well, uh, I don't like that uh, notion. Uh, no offense to this, to Mr. Ohm, but we, uh, we would be better off if we just call it equation for the resistor. I think so. And then now, based on that, we wanted to see if we can do anything similar to that to the capacitor. And the difficulty with the capacitor or inductor for that matter is that now the equation that we had in the time domain was not a linear, just a simple, basically algebraic equation, and rather it had a derivative. So this, if you want to do that division, it's not possible the same way that it was possible for uh, the uh, for the resistor. In other words, uh, once you apply a voltage across this, the current uh, changes as a function of time, so this doesn't become a constant number anymore. Then what happened later on in uh, uh, circuit one was that we actually transformed our equations in the time domain to this other domain called the phasor domain. And it, the uh, reason we did that it was the realization that uh, with the phasors, you can uh, show uh, sinusoidal uh, functions in a simpler way um, that conveys the information about the amplitude and the phase of those sinusoidal uh, functions or signals. Uh, and with that, uh, the math ended up being simplified. But also on top of that, what happened was that this same equation transformed into this new domain ended up looking uh, like this, at which point you could again take the difference between the two voltages this time in the, in the phasor domain and uh, uh, divide that by the current, right? So if we de did that there, it would be with the same definition of now V1 minus V2 divided by the current, it would be the phasor domain V1 minus the phasor domain V2 divided by the phasor domain current would be just, uh, so this goes to the other side, it would be one over C omega J. So this, again, is, is just a number. The only difference is that this number is not a real number, is, 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 is a, uh, a complex number, right? Uh, you can also write this as minus j over c omega. Now, I can call this uh, something, and I, we did, uh, and we ended up calling this, if you remember, impedance, right? 
So also we mentioned that the impedance is the more general definition uh, of resistance or the same definition as the resistance in the phasor domain. You take the voltage difference and divide it by the current in the phasor domain and you get this new concept or definition that we call impedance. With that in mind, if you notice now in the Laplace domain, the same thing has happened, assuming that there is no initial condition, obviously. This is the equation for the capacitor. So here again, what I can do is to write the uh, definition here, V1 minus V2 divided by I becomes just simply Cs. Right? Sorry, one over CS. Now, I can do the same thing that I did before and call that same thing. This would be the impedance, and the impedance is actually the voltage difference divided by the current, but in the domain of Laplace or the S domain. You already see some similarity between these two definitions. And I'm going to already tell you this and come back and do a little bit more. But actually, phasor domain is a special case of Laplace domain. So the most general approach to uh, doing the transformation of the circuit components and equations is to transform them to the Laplace domain. And in a certain situation where all the signals end up being uh, sinusoidal in nature, you could move to phasor domain and use phasors, uh, but it's not the other way around, meaning that Laplace is uh, useful for any kind of signal, but then for the case of uh, sinusoidal, alternating sinusoidal uh, signals, you can actually go to phasor domain. So the most uh, complete definition of impedance would be the definition of impedance in the Laplace domain, where you take the voltage difference divided by the current, everything in the Laplace domain, and that gives you the definition of impedance. So with that short introduction, now we can actually treat all the three components that we know about in the Laplace domain this way. For the resistor, the equation is the same, so I'm going to call it impedance of the resistor in the S domain, and that's just R. That doesn't change. Same thing that happened in the phasor happens over there. Basically, this becomes I is equal to uh, uh, R, basically 1 over R V1 minus V2, or uh, V divided by I is equal to R because the time domain definition of resistance didn't have any notion of derivative, so nothing changes. And we already saw that. For the capacitor, on the other hand, the impedance of the capacitor is defined as 1 over Cs. And for the inductor, the definition becomes Ls. And that's simple to show if you recall the equation for the uh, capacitance for the inductor was V1S minus V2S is equal to LSIS without the initial condition. So V1 minus V2 divided by IS would be LS. And these are the impedances defined in the Laplace domain. Now this could, uh, the same effect that knowing about resistance and equivalent resistance had on uh, our calculations for the circuit analysis when we were only dealing with resistor. In other words, uh, when we started combining these all, all these resistors to find an equivalent resistance and simplify some of uh, uh, complex settings that we had, we can now do the same thing in a Laplace domain and quickly combine components and find out certain uh, parameters in a circuit uh, much quicker than before. Uh, I'm going to clear this keep the definitions somewhere, and then come back and show you how that's going to be helpful. Okay, so let's say in this uh, circuit, we uh, want to quickly calculate what is the current that is passing through the resistor or the current that is coming out of 
the uh, voltage source after t equal to zero. Now, again, let me recall you that the impedance of an inductor is Ls, and the impedance of a capacitor is 1 over Cs, and obviously the impedance of a resistor is R. We know how to uh, basically analyze this circuit, right? Uh, we know how to do it in many different ways. We can do it time domain. We no longer will do time domain because Laplace uh, transform helped us uh, avoid doing uh, differential equations. So we naturally would use Laplace domain, just uh, do uh, the universal method and calculate all the currents and voltages. But in this specific situation if all i care about is this current that is coming out of the uh, uh, voltage source there's actually a shortcut that i can use and here's the shortcut i can take this and in the domain of laplace i can turn it into one impedance how do i do that well this is an impedance that's an impedance and that's an impedance each is an impedance and looking into this whole thing these two impedances are in parallel to each other and then the result is in series with that impedance and then this whole thing turns into one equivalent impedance right so that's what i'm going to do i'm just going to say that the equivalent impedance that i see here so z equivalent is simply the equivalence uh, of resistance in the uh, S domain, which is just R, plus the equivalent of capacitor and the inductor in, in parallel to each other. So I'm going to say ZC uh, in parallel with ZL. And I know how to do that, putting uh, impedances in parallel to each other. That would be R plus ZC times ZL over zc plus zl and i'm just going to use these values and replace them here so that would be r plus now that's one over cs times ls over one over cs plus ls so let's just do the calculation that would be r and two cs go away so in the numerator i'm going to have just ls in the denominator, I'm going to have 1 plus LC S to the power of 2. That's plus. So one more step. This becomes R plus LS plus R L C s to the power of 2 divided by 1 plus lc s to the power of 2 if i haven't done incorrectly so with that being the equivalent impedance now i just put my source here in the domain of laplace which is basically a ut and that's 1 over s and i can quickly calculate what i s would be which is just this voltage divided by that impedance so that would be 1 over s divided by this whole thing z equivalent which ends up being now this goes up that becomes 1 plus lc s to the power of 2 divided by s times r plus ls plus r l c s to the power of 2 and i'm done I know what the current is going to be. And if I had values, I could put those values in this equation. And I would tell you what the current is immediately without really doing much of an uh, analysis. Uh, we are doing analysis, but it's not the same relatively lengthy equations that we wrote. Uh, otherwise, we're following the universal method. And then if I need to know the time domain equivalent, I just take the same equation and then... Uh, to the inverse of plus transform so this kind of becomes the same kind of shortcut that we used when everything was just simple resistors but this time we can do more complicated circuits where there are actually inductors and capacitors and this is a very powerful technique that you can use from now on to do a lot of calculations faster and more efficient
and take also and get the intuition into how things work also in a, a much quicker way. I hope uh, this has been helpful. We're going to do more of these kind of calculations later on and take advantage of this new knowledge that we just acquired. Thank you very much for your attention.